welcome to IT Assist. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a wireless GPO policy that will connect your domain laptops to the wireless network automatically. To get this working, you are going to need a few things. You're going to need a domain controller. You're going to need a wireless access point. You're going to need a working network. And of course, you're going to need a client to connect. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and get started. In my scenario, I'm using server 2016. This should work on 2012 R2. 2012 and 2008 R2. First thing you want to do is install a couple of roles. So we're going to open up Server Manager and we're going to install the Certificate Authority Service. We're going to add all the default features, include management tools, and then just hit next. Next, we're just going to use Certificate Authority and we're going to install. So wait for this to finish and then come on back. Okay, it looks like the role has been installed. We can go ahead and close this window. You should see a notification up here and you'll see post deployment configuration. So we're going to go ahead and click that. So we can finish configuring our certificate authority server. So let's go ahead and use the credentials that we're already logged into. This is just the administrator account. Just make sure that this is a domain admin that you're using to authenticate the certificate authority. We're just going to choose certificate authority. We're going to use enterprise CA. This is going to be a root certificate authority. We're going to create a new private key. And we'll just leave the defaults. That looks fine. We'll just leave all this the same. We'll just leave that default also. So once we're done, we'll hit configure. And we're done. So the next thing we have to do is we have to add a network policy server. And what this is going to do is it's going to be used to authenticate our computers and users using Radius. So what we're going to want out of this list is down here, it says network policy and access services. And we're going to restart if we have to. And then click install. And then we're going to wait for this to finish. All right, now that the network policy and access services have been installed, without a reboot, we can just hit close. So now that we have our roles installed, we can go ahead and start configuration. So where I like to start is setting up the wireless access point exactly the way you want it. After you log into your wireless access point, we are going to change some wireless configuration. You're going to want to go to the wireless security part of your access points configuration. In my case, it's at the bottom here. You can see that my security is set to WPA2 TKIP and my WPA authentication is EAP. This is important because it changes my wireless access security from WPA personal to WPA enterprise and you're probably gonna see enterprise in your scenario. For the auth server IP port, it's asking for the radius server or where the radius server is gonna be. And in our situation, it's gonna be the domain controller. Our domain controller is 192.168.1.2. So for our wireless access point, that's the authentication server IP. And the port is set default to 1812 go ahead and leave that and the authentication server secret you can choose whatever one you'd like I just chose something simple pass one two three four five everything else looks good I should also make special note that before I changed my authentication to WPA2 enterprise I had it in WPA2 personal 
and this was a working access point, which means wireless devices such as phones, laptops, they could connect no problems and get on the internet. If you're having any issues, at first get it set up to be a working wireless access point, and then you can change the authentication. You want to notice my SSID. It's on secure wireless. This is going to be important later on. Everything else we don't have to worry about for our radius configuration or our group policy. If you're done with that, go ahead and save your changes to your wireless access point and then we will move on. So before we get to configuring the radius server, I'm going to show you just a little bit about the Active Directory environment I have set up. So you can see I'm on test.local, I have a test organizational unit and I have a laptop OU and in it I have my test laptop that I'm going to be connecting to this wireless access policy. You'll see that I created a security group called Wi-Fi and of course I've got the test user that's going to be used to log into this account so we can do our test. So just very simple setup. This is all you really need. So what I'd like to do next is set up the radius server. This is going to handle the authentication. So if we just open up our start menu, we go to Windows Administrative Tools and we're going to go ahead and open Network Policy Server. And as you can see, the network policy server has not been configured. It's just kind of a blank slate for us. There is a few things that have automatically been created, but what we're interested in is going to the MPS local. You want to right click it. You want to register the server in Active Directory. That gives this server the authority to honor requests for authentication and it should be grayed out. That means you know that you did it right. And what we're concerned about right now is setting up a radius client and the radius client is going to be the access point. So let's go ahead and right click on radius clients. We're going to do new and we're going to make sure it's enabled. Let's give it a friendly name. We're going to enter in the IP. Now, if you want to do it by DNS name, you can enter the DNS name here and then hit verify. It'll make sure it gets the right IP. Now down here, we're going to enter the shared secret. This is the one that we entered into the access point. If I click generate, it will actually show me what I just entered. You can generate a random key if you click the generate button, but we're just going to leave this on manual since this is what we entered into our access point. We want to keep it the same. Under advanced, we're just going to make sure it says radius standard and we're going to hit OK. And now we've created our first radius client, which is the access point. Now the next thing we have to do is we have to create a connection policy. So just to recap really fast, the radius client is what device is going to be connecting. That would be the access point, of course. And now the policy has to be defined to let us know who is actually allowed to connect. So if you go to the connection request policies, you'll see there is a default one in there. You can just leave that one. What we're going to do is we're going to create our own. So right click, go to new. And I'm just going to name this one secure wireless connections. We're going to leave the type as unspecified. Hit next. And now we're going to be adding a condition. And we're going to scroll down till we see NAS port type. You have to identify the NAS port that we're going to be using. We're going to be using, of course, wireless or wireless other. And the wireless other is at the bottom of this list. If you just pull the slider down, hit OK. And now we've created our condition. Let's hit next. We're going to choose authenticate request on the server. And we are not going to override the network policy authentication settings. These settings, we can just leave default. And then we're going to finish. The only thing I want to do now is actually want to move this up. So this policy becomes number one in the processing order. And now you have a secure wireless connections policy. Basically what this policy does is allows wireless computers or wireless laptops to request authentication. So after we're done creating the secure wireless connections connection request policy, we need to create a network policy. We're just going to right click and choose new like we did before. And for this policy name, I am also going to name it secure wireless connections. Once again, the type of network access server is unspecified. Hit next. And under the specify conditions, we're going to go ahead and click add. We're going to choose Windows Group. 
can add a group. And this is the Wi-Fi group that I showed you earlier in Active Directory Security Groups. Hit OK. And we're going to add one more condition. We're going to add the same condition that we added last time, which is wireless other and wireless IEEE 802.11. Hit OK. We're going to grant access, of course. Next. And it's going to say, okay, what kind of authentication are we going to allow? Choose EAP. We don't have to add any other additional with the add button, but we do want to leave these four checkboxes checked. We're going to hit next. Here we can set idle timeout, session timeout, day and time restrictions. And for the NAS port type, we actually don't have to specify it here because we did that with our other policy. So we'll hit next. And we can leave all these on default. No changes need to be made here. Let's hit next. And we can hit finish. Once again, I'd like this policy to be number one in the processing order. So I'm just gonna move it up until it's in the number one position. So we are done with configuring the radius server. So let's go ahead and look at Active Directory really fast. So we have a laptop. And if you look at the member, it's already a member of the Wi-Fi group. If it's not, you can just hit add, choose uh, your Wi-Fi group. And I'm also authenticating a user. There he is, he's in the Wi-Fi group. So Active Directory is all set. The last thing we have to do is we actually have to create the group policy. And we just go to administrative tools. Since this is a domain controller, it already has group policy management installed. So here's our group policy management. And of course we have the test OU, and this is where the laptop is. And right now we have no policy applied. So let's go ahead and create one. We're gonna right click, create GPO in this domain and link it here. Let's just name this uh, Wi-Fi. Right click it and go to edit. Under computer configuration, go to policies, Windows settings, and we're gonna go to security settings. We have wireless network policies. So if we right click, we're gonna create a new wireless network policy for Windows Vista or later releases. I'm just gonna name this test wireless network. You can add a description here if you'd like. Make sure this checkbox is marked. And now it's time to add a profile. We're gonna click add, infrastructure. Now let's name the profile. I'm just gonna name it test. Now it's time to add the SSID that was in our wireless access point. So our SSID is secure wireless. It's important to type it exactly how it is in your wireless access point, including capitals or spaces or any other special characters. So once we have this typed exactly how it is in the AP, we're gonna hit add. We're gonna leave these two checkboxes marked and we're gonna click on the security tab. Under authentication, we're gonna use WPA2 Enterprise. And for the encryption, if you remember, this is TKIP. We are using EAP for the authentication method in the access point. We're gonna do one more thing with that and click properties. And we're gonna scroll all the way down and we're gonna find our certificate authority that we just installed. We're actually gonna check all of them. Sometimes it shows up more than once in this list. These are the only ones we have to check. We can leave the rest of these on the default. We're gonna hit okay. Under the authentication mode, I like to leave this on user or computer. And this is the reason that we added both the user and the computer to the Wi-Fi group. And here's why. When we click advanced, we have an option called single sign-on. So if I check this, what it'll do, if it's a domain computer, it'll already look for the wireless access point. It'll connect. And then any user, even if they have never logged into the laptop before, can go ahead and log in. So that's why I like to add the computer to the authentication group also. For now, I'm just gonna uncheck that. We don't really need that in our situation. The reason I do the user is because sometimes people have to connect to the access point that are not connecting from a domain computer. So like your Android phone, or if you have a non-domain laptop and you still wanna use this Wi-Fi network, well, you're gonna have to authenticate with a username and a password that's been given access. So somebody that's in the Wi-Fi group. So that's why I leave user and computer authentication on both of those. 
Once this is done, hit OK and hit OK. Once the wireless policy has been created, there's one last change to make in this group policy. Click on Public Key Policies. We're going to change the properties of all three of these at the bottom. Open the properties, change this to Enabled. Check these two boxes and press OK. Open properties on the next one. Define these policy settings. Include both checkboxes. And for the final change, we enable this and press OK. Basically, as long as you put the laptop in this organizational unit in Active Directory, and as long as it's in this group that we created, it should connect automatically. Now let's open up the firewall port on the server. Search for and open Windows Firewall with advanced security. Under inbound rules, we're going to make a new rule. Rule type is port, TCP port 1812, the same one specified in the access point. Allow it on domain networks only. Now let's create an identical outbound rule. And you're done with the firewall. There's one last thing you have to do in order for this to work. Well, you have to connect to the wired network in order to get the group policy. So let's go ahead and do that now. So now here we are on a domain join laptop. As you can see, I'm connected to the wired network. And the reason is because I need to get this new group policy that we just created so that my laptop will connect to the wireless. So we're just gonna open up band prompt. We're just gonna type GP update and the policy should be updated. Looks like the user and the computer policy have both been completed successfully. So now let's go ahead and turn on the Wi-Fi and see if we automatically connect. And I'm going to turn on this wireless adapter that I turned off before. Let's see what happens. As you can see, we are connected to the test network. This is the name of the profile that we created earlier. Now we're connected as a domain laptop and it will automatically connect whenever the network's in range. You no longer have to give anyone the pre-shared key for your wireless password. And if you want anyone that doesn't have a domain computer to connect, you just have to set them up with the user account in Active Directory, add them to the Wi-Fi user group, and they'll be able to connect with their Android or non-domain computer. I hope this video helped you guys. And if it did, please leave a like below, share, and subscribe if you would be so kind. And if you're still having problems, then continue to watch this video because what I'm going to do for all of you is I took screenshots of every single part of my configuration, even the menus that I didn't show you in this video. So I want you to look at the screenshots of the entire setup and compare it with your settings. Now, if it's working for you, great. You can stop watching this video now. I really appreciate it. But for those of you still having problems, continue to watch and look at all my settings. It might help you. Thanks guys. And we'll see you next time.